Hello, in today's session, I will show you how to configure the clock sources of the STM32 Nucleo 64 board. We will use the F072 RB board, which incorporates the high performance ARM Cortex M0, operating at up to 48 MHz frequency. I will show you the code that we will analyze in today's video. If you are a person who has experience in developing code for the STM32 board, the explanation of each instruction of this code may seem boring. So if you want to see the complete code, here you can see it. If you do not have much idea of how each line of this code works, uh, the following slides can be very valuable for you. And I recommend that you take the time to understand how the configuration of the clock sources are made. The system clock selection is performed on a startup. However, the internal RC 8 MHz oscillator is selected as default CPU clock on reset. An external clock can be selected, in which case it is monitored for a failure. If failure is detected, the system automatically switches back to the internal RC oscillator. Various clock sources can be used to drive the system clock. The high-speed internal clock signal is generated from an internal 8 MHz RC oscillator and can be used directly as a system clock or for PLL input. The high-speed internal oscillator has the advantage of providing a clock source at low cost. It also has a faster startup time than the high-speed external crystal oscillator, however, even with calibration, the frequency is less accurate than an external crystal oscillator or ceramic resonator. The high-speed external clock is an external oscillator from 4 to 32 MHz and it has the advantage of producing a very accurate rate on the main clock. The internal phase lock loop can be used to multiply the high-speed internal clock a divided HSI48 or the high speed external output clock frequency. The PLL configuration must be done before enabling the PLL. Once the PLL is enabled, these parameters cannot be changed. The HSI48 clock signal is generated from an internal 48 MHz oscillator and can be used directly as a system clock or divided and be used as PLL input. The internal 48 MHz oscillator is mainly dedicated to provide a high precision clock to the USB peripheral by means of a special clock recovery system circuitry. Several preschoolers can be used to configure the frequency of the AHB and the APB domains. The AHB and the APB domain's maximum frequency is 48 MHz. The above picture represents the full hardware clock tree inside of the MCU. The blue boxes are the existing internal clock sources, and the gray boxes represent external oscillators that you may or may not wish to use instead. Other boxes are multiplexer, frequency dividers, and frequency multiplier. By fine-tuning all these boxes, you can achieve a large amount of different clock configurations. Clock and power consumption are tightly linked, and you want the most of the MCU with as low current as possible. In power-aware embedded systems, a general rule is only clock the hardware your application needs, uh, lower the clock frequency as much as you can, and use the low power modes like sleep, stop, standby, whenever you can. We can configure the high speed external clock in two different modes. The first one is the bypass mode in which the HSE receives a clock from an external source on the board. The HSE does nothing but letting that clock passing through it. And the second one is the oscillator mode, in which the HSE is connected to a crystal capacitor network 
and then the HSC drives this network in order to produce oscillations. Okay, now we are going to go through the instructions of the code that I showed you uh, at the beginning of this video. And first, in the clock control register, we need to start the high speed external clock in bypass mode by writing a 1 into the HSE crystal oscillator bypass bit and in the HSE clock enable bit. We must wait until the high speed external clock is ready. This by creating a do while loop that is meant to check the HSE clock ready flag. The loop will terminate once bit 17 has a value of 1 or when the timeout variable reaches 0. In the clock configuration register, we have to select the high speed external clock as phase lock loop input source. First, we need to clear the bits 16 and 15. And once these bits are cleared, we can see the HSE as PLL input clock. In the clock configuration register 2, we have to write a 0 to indicate that we won't divide our input clock. Back into the clock configuration register, you have to clear the PLL multiplication factor bits, and once they are cleared, write a 4 to those register to select the multiplication factor by 6. In the clock control register, you must enable the PLL on bit by writing a 1 to bit 24. You will need to create a do while loop to wait until the phase lock loop is ready. This is pretty easy as you only need to check the bit 25 of the clock control register. Once the bit 25 is 1, we know that the PLL is locked. You will need to set the advanced high performance boost prescaler. Since we don't want to divide the system clock, we just need to write a zero to the HCLK prescaler bits. In the clock configuration register, you need to set the advanced peripheral bus 1 prescaler to divide by 1. This will set the APB1 clock to 40 MHz. And in the flash access control register, you must enable the flash prefetch buffer and set the flash latency by writing a 1 in bit 4 and a 1 in bit 0. Going back into the clock configuration register, the bit 0 and 1 must be cleared and PLL must be selected as system clock by writing a 2 to the bits mentioned before. In order to wait until the phase lock loop becomes main switch input, a do while loop must be created, and as long as the PLL is not used as the system clock, the loop will execute. The microcontroller clock output register must be cleared, and you have to write a 4 into the MC OS register to select the system clock as the microcontroller clock output source. Now we will use PA8 as MCO output and we need to clear the MCO prescaler bits. Indicate that the MCO will be divided by 17 to obtain a 3 MHz output and you have to enable the GPO8 clock by writing a 1 into the bit 17 of the AHB peripheral clock enabled register. In the GPO port mode register, clear the bit 17 and 16 and configure the pin A8 as alternate function mode. Finally, set the alternate function selection for port A pin 8 to AF0. The system core clock update function does the reverse job of computing actual CPU clock frequency based on the RCC settings and then updates the system core clock global variable. It is a convenient way to check if things have been set as expected. Ok, so before the starting code execution, you must have a value of 8 MHz corresponding to nominal clock setting at the startup. Once we enter the while loop, the clock should be now 48 MHz. 